will turn to James chapter 3. If you have a Bible, please, would you turn to James chapter 3. Even if you haven't a Bible, you know, if I'm telling you it is true, because I wouldn't tell you if it wasn't there. Behold, in chapter 3 of James, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Now, you saw me the other night. I still have the marks and the, the proof of it where we used the pen to put it in my mouth like of a bit. You remember? Man, poor Anna was putting on it, and she said, it's going to break, it's going to break. <laughs> and it did break, and that was because I got the bit between my teeth, which is what a horse tries to do, because two things it can do, when it gets a bit between its teeth, it can go without you pulling it and hurting its mouth, it can keep going. And not only that, but then it has a chance, if you let your reins loose, it can get the bit out. But I did say Anna would bring the bit and the bridle. And you did, didn't you? So I'm going to diverse for just a few minutes with this. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole bodies. We know that if any man who faint not in word, that's verse 2 of the same chapter, the same as a perfect man, so therefore, careless speaking, you're very imperfect with careless speaking. There's a bit of a clue in the last verse of the previous chapter, verse 26 of chapter 2. You see what it says? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. And I want to re-emphasize that the body needs the spirit. And if there's no spirit, the body is dead. Don't you think the church without the Holy Spirit is dead? The church which is his body. So it is the spirit that uses the body, not the body that uses the spirit. You can see that. That's quite simple, isn't it? You see a person you're at, you've been at the deathbed of some people. I don't like it, but I've been there. I mean, you have to be sometime. We very, very occasionally, there's a really special passing. Very, very occasionally. But when a person has died, the spirit has left the body. And then the body looks the same, at least for a while, but it is dead because the spirit has gone out of it. It is the spirit that uses the body. We have to understand it is the Holy Spirit that uses the body of Christ. It is not we as the body using the Holy Spirit like so many will try to teach us. It is the body being yielded to the spirit so that the spirit operates through the body. Do you remember what I was saying about this bit in the horse's mouth and this helm to guide the big boat? I was saying that God wants control of our lives. He wants to control our bodies by being in us. I remember reading the story about the first time they put on a demonstration of what uh, remote control could do. And they went to the Albert Hall and they had a whole lot of special people to see what was going to happen. And the one who had designed the little aircraft and the remote controls 
got the little aircraft uh, to fly all over the Albert Hall and it would rise and fall and dive and go and run and turn and it was a marvel remote control. No pilot in it, but remote control. You all know about remote control now. You just sit there at the television drink and you say you're neat and the thing and you go, Whoop. about 40 channels. You know, you know what I'm talking about? But you see, God does not want to operate his people by remote control. He wants to come in and be the pilot. Hallelujah. He wants to be in the vessel. He wants to be in charge of the vessel. He wants to guide our feet. He wants to hold our hands. He wants to speak through us. Amen. But you see, we've got to learn to get used to the bit. Come on, Anna. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. And behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Last part of verse 6 says, And it is set on fire of hell. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths. Right. What is this metal thing? Bit. That is the bit. Speak up. What is it? The bit. It is the bit. This bit goes in the horse's mouth like so. Right? Mm -hmm. And then this is pulled up along. I'm not going to put it in my mouth. <laughs> Did you wash it? No, I'm sure you didn't. So sort of. Sort of. You didn't do it very well. If I did it myself, then I'd put it in my mouth. But I don't know how well you washed it after that big slobbering horse. <laughs> so I'll not risk it. All right. So you might say, oh, Brother Chambers, just believe that <laughs> you take any deadly thing, it'll not hurt you. That's all very well if they throw you in the lands den. But what's the point in going looking for a day in the lands and jumping in to see if it works? <laughs> No thanks. So this goes in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And this is up the side of the jaw, see? Mm -hmm. Now, Anna can get all technical, you know, and she can tell us about the different kinds of writing, whether it's Western writing or English writing, or whether you're going to steer a horse by this or that. But we're making the bit the central point tonight. Because the bit, what has to be done with the bit? It goes in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Whenever you went to put the bit in the mouth of Jack, the horse's name is Jack, did you just pull his snout up a bit and then he opened his mouth and you put that in and there was no problem? Yeah. And what happened? He threw his head up. He lifted his head out. Uh, Very high. And what did you do? Pulled on his nose to get his head back he Pulled down. on his nose. He's quite heavy, you know, with it. And then, and he's very tall, he's very tall. How many hands? 16.3. Can you tell us what that comes to in feet or inches? It's four inches to a hand. So it's mm -hmm. 16 times four and then plus three more. Mm -hmm. And that's your inches. 50, 60. Well, he's too tall for me. That's not his head. Yeah, but then I'm knowing that. That's what I'm knowing. <laughs> and then his head goes up another 18 inches above that. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, monster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all right, you can slap the dog, you know, and you can chase the cat. But when you've got over a half a ton of horse, wants to go his own way, you better train him good. Right, so you get this in, you had to train him to take the bit. Mm -hmm. Mind you, he wasn't too bad, was he? No, I've seen worse. Mm. Okay. But did it just come like so? No, it took months. It took months to get him used to the bit. Why do you think he didn't like the bit? Because it's hard. It's, it's hard and... It tells him what he's supposed to do and he doesn't it like it. It tells him what he's supposed to do and he doesn't like it. What was the verse I used? The words... The words of the wise are as... 
My grandfather, my grandfather, he was quite a strong man. He, 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 I don't know why he did it, but I don't know what happened to make it happen. But he knocked out a donkey with one punch. I don't know what Sister Dawn is saying. <laughs> if you can remember, I'll ask you when I get home. But he had a thumb that used to stick out like so, you know, strong thumb. And he had some children. He had my mother. He had uh, my Aunt Ruby, my Aunt Mabel, and my Uncle Sammy. And, you know... If they were misbehaving, you know, he had this very strong thumb and hand, and, and he'd go like that. And I tell you, those girls learned to move whenever he hit them with that thumb. He said, if they're misbehaving, he didn't mess around, he just, just jammed the thumb into the ribs. It, it didn't like it, but it made them pay heed. The words of the wise are as a goad is a sharp, hard, pointed stick. And it is used to guide the oxen, or other animals as well, but particularly the oxen, so that when they are plowing, it keeps them in a straight line. When they would turn to the right, they get a prod in the ribs, or the rump, as I might say. And if they go to the other side, they get the thing in the other side, so they keep going the way they're supposed to go. I found it rather interesting and amusing to see Susan from Zimbabwe when we were out there some years ago when her mother out on the wilds was plowing up the land, she had this goat. And she kept those oxen going the right way boop, boop, by the goat. The words of the wise are as goads. Good preaching may bring a laugh now and again, but good preaching is words being presented in a way that will goad people into doing something. Amen. And, and I am too old to play church. And I have no intention of going into competition with popular prophets. I want to bring the word of God to God's people because in the final analysis, this end time uh, is depending upon a remnant of people who are true to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Right. So we put this, you finally get him to take it in his mouth, right? And when you get it in his mouth then, you have this, what is this for? This. Oh, and you can use it for me a bit. Like, it, but it's not his true. ears go through this here. Don't mush up my hair now, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, his ears go through I there. I mean, if you get those three strands out of place. Um, so. <laughs> you guys can laugh, but you know, every time you go to the mirror these days, you say... I love those ones that have gone far more than the ones that are still here. Who do you think you're kidding, huh? And sisters, don't laugh too much because you find every wrinkle and every crack and you fill it up and then you put a little bit of powder on it to hide it. <laughs> yeah. True. Amen. Oh, Lord, help us. The things I think, I don't say everything I think, you know. It's a good Some women of their, of, their, of their wives took off the makeup they think is a different woman. <laughs> However, that's... Yeah, people can be very foolish. I knew a Christian brother, and he used to insist that his wife put on makeup and all at night going to bed. Lord, help us. Yeah. Uh, I'm a realist. Right, so where, where does this go? Over his... Head. Yeah, 
And his ears go through here, so that his ears are longer than mine, aren't they? Just a bit. So his ear will. Can you, there's an ear. <laughs> right. There's another ear. <laughs> his ears right. go through here. Right. Put it. Put it where the ears would be. <laughs> right. So then, once it goes over his ears, right, come on, it can't come off. Come on. It can't come off because the ears. Go on. Put it. Put them in. Sorry. The ears are holding it from falling down the front of his face. Because if he didn't have that... Right, now we'll imagine we have ears up here. Right? What would happen to the bit? If this, the, would, this would come forward. Yeah, and what would happen to the bit? It would fall out of his mouth. It would fall out of his mouth. So the use of the bit involves the ears. Come on. Let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak. Note the progression of the argument in the book of James. Uh, it is a, 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 an epistle that focuses on practical religion. That's the whole message. Uh, verse 22 of the first chapter says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only because if you are only a hearer and not a doer you are deceiving your own self that's what the book says amen okay so it has to hook over his ears why do you think they had to anoint uh, the priest uh, they anointed their ears it's very important what we listen to didn't Jesus say take care how you hear Amen, amen. So this must go over the ears. So that it holds a bit up there. Is that all? No, I see there's another stop here. I see. Right, you hold that now, and I'll take this stop. So this stop will go round the horse's nose, and I haven't got a big long snout like him, so I can't do it. But it'll go round his nose. I have a big enough nose nearly, but. <laughs> and then it tightens onto his chin so that his jaws are involved. Remember, Samson slew the multitude with the jawbone of the ass. So you see, it goes round the jaws, so it's holding. And it's holding over the ears, and then the bit is in the mouth. Oh, what are these two things for? What's this? The reins. That's the rein. So, right, you can do that, right? Go on, turn around. Right, 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 right. Let's see how I can do that. Yeah, I'll do all right, right? Mm -hmm. So, we've now got the bit in the mouth. It's holding it over the ears. It's tightened onto the jaw. And we want to giddy up horsey. See? And if it's long enough rain, you can make it go. Right. So if I let this loose and I gee it up a little bit, I can take it. It'll go, won't it? But then if I want it, you know, I want that, you know. Okay, I'll get it round. Come, come on, come on, Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, man. Children of Israel had to get to know that. When the pillar moved, they moved. The song we sing, whether we believe it or not, is another matter. When God says move, when God says stop, yeah, man. How many of we know? How many of us know that God sometimes puts the reins on? Yeah, man, He does. Yeah, one time, the man of God, Samuel, whenever he saw Eliab, the big one and the leading one in the household of Jesse, he rose up with the anointing oil and he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. And God said, ha, Samuel, you engaged mouth. He said, whoa, whoa. He pulled him back. He said, I have not chosen this one. 
For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You don't only have to know when to go. You have to know when to stop. Amen. We need to listen to God. The Apostle Paul was going to go someplace, but God spoke to him in the night and changed the whole program. He did get to go there, but later, in God's time, because he was going that direction, but God said, whoa, 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 this is the way you go. And he went to Macedonia because he heard the cry saying, come over and help us. Two men, my Lord in heaven, God says of the prophets that went off the rails in the Old Testament, he said, they ran without me sending them. I want to tell you, we have prophets today who are running without God sending them. And instead of prophesying the word of the Lord, they're prophesying out of their own hearts. What is wrong? When men and women prophesy out of their own hearts and out of their imagination, it is because they are not listening to the reins. The psalmist prayed the prayer by saying, my reins. God wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. The bit is not pleasant in our mouth. Controlling our listening is not pleasant. Getting this thing strapped around your face to keep you on the control is not pleasant. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. God wants us to give him the reins of our lives. Amen. And you know, it's sad if other people don't get victory. But you should make sure you get victory. Even if nobody else does. You want to live as a master of every situation because of something that is inside you. Glory to God. Thank you, Anna. We'd like more, but we have to let it go at that. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I'm going to get some good out of this horse thing somehow. I don't know how, but that's, that's a help. Amen. Now, I have to quit. I have to stop. But I'm trying to get this over to your friends. What caused World War II? How did it all come about? Because a man called Adolf Hitler got to speaking words. And in using words, he stirred up a hatred towards the Jews. And he extended it towards the gypsies. Amen? And other people who were invalided and weak. And as a result... Uh, Six million Jews were slaughtered. A million and a half gypsies, Romanies, were slaughtered. And countless other millions, we don't even know how many, from all the Commonwealth countries and from the USA. We were plunged into World War II because of Hitler's preaching. Amen. How did we get the gospel? We got the gospel because Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we are here tonight because the apostles honored the commission and they give God the reins and he moved to bring them into his power and bring the gospel to our generation. Amen. Let me say this. The same thing happened with Mussolini when he stirred up the Italian people. And then they took aircraft uh, and guns and bullets uh, into Ethiopia and uh, slaughtered people who had nothing, only bows and arrows and spears. And the people were willing and ready to do it because they'd been stirred up by preaching. So how did the, the people... How did the Asians get expelled? And you might jump on me there and say, well, what about this and that and the other? But how did it happen that they were expelled from Uganda? Now, you ministered there for six years. Amin preached his message of poison and hate. 
and people were moved. Oh, come on. When this is Easter. We remember that Jesus was crucified, laid in the tomb, and was raised again from the dead at that first Easter time, don't we? But let us never forget that when Pilate was willing to deliver him and let him free, it was the chief priests and the elders and the leaders of the people. What did they do? They stirred up the people. They preached the poison. Do you realize that in the world today, we have people who are making themselves richer. We have people who are making themselves richer not by virtue of their principles, but because they see in terrorism there is money to be made and a lot of the people who are at the back of terrorism couldn't care less. Uh, they want power and they want money uh, and they want their own way. So they will stir up uh, the Arabs against uh, the Jews and the Jews against the Arabs uh, and the black against the white and the white against the black. And on one hand you have black power on another hand you have white power then you have somebody else comes along and they preach and then we have woman's power and then somebody gets upset and then they preach man's power so that you have uh, sectarianism throughout the whole world today in the body of Christ it's not meant to be there's neither male nor female Neither rich nor poor, neither bond nor free, neither Jew nor Greek, but all one in Christ Jesus. 